Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on equations of a circle and its tangent. So let's go through what a tangent is. These are all examples of tangents and a tangent is basically a straight line that just touches a function or a curve at one point. Now at GCSE it's important to note the general equation of a circle. At GCSE the equation that we use is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared where the centre of the circle is always the origin and the radius is labelled as r. So in summary, x squared plus y squared is always equal to the radius squared. This is important to know, alongside our circle theorem regarding tangents. Remember the tangent is always perpendicular to the radius. And also remember the relationship between gradients. The gradient of the radius to the tangent is always the negative reciprocal of the gradient of the tangent. These are important facts to know. So let's put these facts into some exam questions. Here the question states the diagram shows a circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equals 261. The tangent to the circle is drawn at point A with the coordinates P minus 15 and it states that P is greater than 0. We're asked to find the equation of tangent at A. Now remember the facts required at GCSE level. We know the equation of a circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared when the centre of the circle is at the origin. So we know 261 is the radius squared. So therefore we know the radius is square root 261. Now knowing this, let's label what we know. Well, I know the radius is root 261, and I also know the horizontal distance is p, given by this coordinate. Now I'm going to label the vertical distance as 15. I'm not going to label it minus 15 because it's a length. Now the reason why I've labeled lengths is because we have a right angle triangle and we have lengths. So that means we're using Pythagoras. So substituting into Pythagoras, we know p squared plus 15 squared is equal to root 261 squared, which is 261. Now I can solve for p. Well, this means p squared is equal to 261 take away 15 squared. So working this out gives me the value of p to be 6. So now I know p is 6. I know the coordinate of a. I know the coordinate of a is 6 minus 15. Now the question wants us to find the equation of the tangent at A. We know a tangent is a straight line, and it'll be in the form y equals mx plus c. So let's use what we know. Well, we have information about the radius, and the relationship between the gradient of the radius and the tangent, we can work out the gradient of the radius. Well, to work out the gradient of the radius from the centre to A, it would be simply the difference in y-coordinates over the difference in x-coordinates. So we can work out the gradient to be minus 5 over 2. Now remember, the gradient of the tangent will be the negative reciprocal of this gradient. So therefore, we know the gradient of the tangent to be 2 over 5. Now we can substitute in to y equals mx plus c and see what we have from here. Well, I know the gradient is now 2 over 5. I also know I have an x-coordinate of 6 and a y-coordinate of minus 15. Substituting this in, I can now solve for c. So I can work out c to be minus 87 over 5. Therefore, the equation of the tangent at point A is y equals 2 over 5x subtract 87 over 5. This was a big question because it used lots of important facts associated with circles. So let's do another exam question. Here the question states that L is the circle with the equation x squared plus y squared equaling 4. We know the point P has the coordinate 3 over 2 and root 7 over 2 and is on the point L. Now we're asked to find the equation of the tangent to L at the point P. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So 
So let's label what we know. Well, the examiner wants us to find the equation of the tangent to L at the point P. So this is our tangent, and we need to find the equation of our tangent. Now remember, a tangent is a straight line, so it will be in the form of y equals mx plus c. So let's start with finding m out first, which is our gradient, because we can find the gradient from the centre to point P. To do this, remember it's the difference in the y-coordinates from the centre to P over the difference of x-coordinates. So this would be root 7 over 2 subtract 0 over 3 over 2 subtract 0. Working this out, we know that the gradient from the origin to point P would be root 7 over 3. But remember our circle theorem fact and the relationship between the radius gradient and its tangent. That means we know the gradient of the tangent would be minus 3 over root 7. So let's substitute what we know. So now we have y equals minus 3 over root 7x plus c. Now I have a coordinate, so I can substitute my coordinate from here. Substituting my y value and my x value, I can work out c, and I can work out c, so therefore I have the equation of the tangent. So my equation of the tangent is y equals minus 3 over root 7x plus 8 over root 7. So let's have a look at our last exam question involving equations of a circle and tangents. Here the question wants us to prove algebraically that the straight line with the equation x minus 2y equals 10 is a tangent to the circle with the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 20. Now proving that an equation of a line is a tangent means the equation of the circle will meet the line at one point. That would be your proof that the equation of the line is a tangent. So, knowing this, we can form simultaneous equations. Well, we know the equation of the line is x minus 2y equals 10, and we know the equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 20. So, using our knowledge of simultaneous equations, let's rearrange the equation of our straight line to make x the subject, and this will make it a little bit easier for us. So, rearranging means x is equal to 10 plus 2y. Now I can substitute this into our second equation. So, substituting in, we know x is 10 plus 2y, so we have 10 plus 2y all squared, add y squared equals 20. Now we have double brackets here, so it's always good practice to show this for when we're expanding. Then 10 times 10 is our 100, 10 times 2y is our 20y, 2y times our 10 is our 20y, and 2y times my 2y is 4y squared. We're still adding our y squared, and it still equals 20. Now collecting all our like terms forms a nice quadratic. 5y squared plus 40y plus 100 equals 20. And remember, when solving quadratics, always equate to 0. So equating to the 0 gives us 5y squared plus 40y plus 80 equals 0. Now our quadratic equals 0, we can solve. Well, I'm going to divide every term by 5 because I can see 5 is the highest common factor of each term. This gives me y squared plus 8y plus 16 equals 0. Now for me, I can factorize this quite easily, but you're very welcome to use the formula if you want. Two numbers that multiply together to give 16, but add together to give 8, well it's 4 and 4. So that means it's y plus 4, y plus 4. This means there is only one solution for y, which is minus 4. If I know y is minus 4, I can simply substitute back into the equation that we wrote before, so I can work out x, and I now know x is 2. So x minus 2y equals 10 is a tangent, because it only meets the circle at one point, which is 2 minus 4. I hope this lesson has been helpful when tackling exam questions involving an equation of a circle and its tangents. It's always important to know the definition, the equation of the circle at GCSE level, our circle theorem, and the relationship between the radius and the tangent. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel, so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.